What's going on everyone? Juice Bags here and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. I am making my way back up after another Ancient Power reset and I'm on floor number 69 in Onslaught. Of course I have to go floor 51 to floor 80. Uh, just past the midway point there and ready to move on in to the next Dragonfrost Keep. Now I know that uh, a lot of folks including myself have had our issues on this map. Uh, with burning strikes or not, it's real easy to have this one go south on you. However, going to go ahead and give it a shot. I've got a nice variety of lanes here. I've got uh, some long shot EMPs. I got a Dreadbones Horde over there. We got Winter is here. We got a lovely one here Spellbreaker and Control Burn Geo Hex Zerker Throwers. Omega Squad Epsilon with Proximity and Bullet Sponge. That one will actually be relatively easy. And pretty easy one over here too, the front line. Now we do have EMP healers and we've got the lovely headstrong assassins, everybody's favorite. And if anything is going to screw me up on this particular run, I am sure it's going to be that right there. <laughs> and then we've got some Psylava Whompers and a game Ogre Lane with armor. That armor is going to make that game Ogre Lane kind of a free one. So let's go ahead and get things started. Now I'm going to use a kind of variety here. I've, uh, actually, I don't think I'm going to go with a Sky Guard at all. I am going to use some Flame Auras with Deadly Strikes, Destruction, and Defense Rate, and going with Melee Boom and Power Servo on just this kind of throwaway reset relic that I've been using. And then Lightning Strike Auras with Destruction, Defense Rate, and Vampiric with Anti-Melee and Mini Boss Servo. Another throwaway, so it's only 6 to 10 upgrades but really good mods to find for an Ancient Power use only type relic. And then I'm just going with my campaign weapon manufacturers as we're just really relying on them for the stun. So I'm not going to sweat the fact that it's not going to really be doing a whole lot of damage. Got a nice ballista throw away as well. You see, uh, it's only a 1 of 10 and a 2 of 10, yet it's got a nice main stat roll and it's just a perfect reset medallion to get me up to floor 80. And then with those controlled burn lanes, I will probably go with some poison dart towers as well. I do have a nice anti-support servo on this one. However, it's an anti-support servo. <laughs> I do have piercer servo, and that's what I was really looking for. And going with destruction, defense rate, and vampiric empowerment. Now, I'm not using any of my hyper shards. I do have this vicious equipped. But as you see, it's 0 of 12. This particular run through, I just didn't feel like spending the 2 million gold on it, as I did spend a little bit of cash on some various crafting materials. Anyway, let's get it started here. We got the front line and Omega Squad Epsilon coming this way. That proximity on the Omega Squad Epsilon is really going to help. And front line, of course, can just be burned down usually with some nice Aura stacks. So let's go ahead and go... Something like that, and I think that is actually going to cover that lane. We'll see what's left here. Now, coming over this way, we've got the Spellbreaker and Controlled Burn, and then we've got Winners here, so it's kind of a mixed setup. But I am still going to put the Weapon Manufacturers in for stun. We've got no Cyborgs, so the stun should be very effective. And... You know, that winner's here. I just have to use a Flame Mara. I got to get some fire damage into the mix there. Man, I'd love to use two, to be honest. Let me see if the DU will allow for me to use two here. If I can go two, something like that, that's going to be a little bit more power, as I'm definitely going to need something in the back here. So, let's see. First things first, why don't we go with a Poison Dart Tower? Pointed directly onto that controlled burn lane. And then we'll put a ballista next to it for some physical damage on top here. And that ballista will kind of cover both lanes. So I'm going to leave that kind of like that and hope that's going to be enough to hold that down. If I can survive wave one, I think I will be pretty good there. Okay, now we've got the EMP stabbies here with long shot. And we've got Dreadbones over here. So we've got no Cyborgs over here as well. I can be very careless with my weapon manufacturer. And 
Let's see, let's put one note up top there. And, you know, Dreadbones is always a big lane, so let's go ahead and use our Death From Above ability and mess up the entire placement. Let's try that one more time. And I think I will go lengthways. Now, Dreadbones Horde is another big AoE herd. Let's go something like two Flame Auras and a Lightning Strike, maybe. And this we that Weapon Man node is not going to kill that EMP lane by itself. So let's get a Skyguard in the mix as well. Now, what did we have over here? We got the Headstrong Assassins here with the EMP healers. How many mobs? Only 30 mobs in that pack. Hmm. That leaves me pretty darn tempted to try something like this. Now, the weapon manufacturer, of course, is not going to stun those flyers. So I could... Hmm. Do I want to put an aura up here? I think the DU is going to allow for it. Let's go ahead and throw an aura right there to kind of assist a little bit with the flyers. And then what do we have left? We've got 410 left for two relatively easy lanes here. In fact, we're going to try to spawn camp that Psy Lava Whompers lane inside. And we're going to do that by putting a weapon manufacturer node right up on the spawn. So the weapon man is hitting inside of the spawn. That's going to stun him in there. And then we've got two flame auras and a lightning strike. For the damage output there. Now over here we're going to kind of do the same thing. However, it's game ogre. So we're just going all lightning strike auras. As I do have the anti-melee and the anti-mini boss on my LSAs. So let's go something like that. And then we'll just have three LSAs that are going to double dip the whole way around. I kind of feel like I should throw something else in the back just to be safe. Let's see, i tell you what we can do. Let's hit something else on this lane. Let's see, can we get a little cheeky placement up here? Nope, it doesn't look like it there. What about up top? Doesn't look like we have any good little hidey spots up top that we can use. So, let's just rely on that LSA's range. I'll put it like right there right about here that should keep the cyborgs the cyborgs shouldn't be too interested in that and unless they make the turn and it'll give me a little bonus protection you know what i'm so tempted just to try it over here too and that's going to get borked there's no doubt about it but i'm going to give it a shot with another lsa over on that side as well as kind of a little last resort and then now let's see we've got that winner's here lane in this geohex zerker thrower lane we might be able to put a little bit more onto that. Let's go with one more Flame Aura. Or you know what? We actually have no Cyborgs at all coming out of that lane right now. Actually, But I do have 110 left. So let's go ahead and get a little bit of a spawn camp on this lane as well. There's no Cyborgs there and I don't have Tenacity on any of this stuff. So that should really help out though. So let's go ahead and get things started. Hope we don't get any little double dragon bugs. But we all know this tends to happen, unfortunately. He's going up this way with it. Everything looking good. Let's get uh, some Grave Infections and Frostfire stacked up on this Dreadbones lane. As that is just extremely powerful on these really dense lanes. As it's just going to pass through all that entire pack there, which is really, really nice. Let's see if we can do the same thing up here. Just going to kind of pass it around. I'm keeping an eye on the mini-map. Let's see, my Headstrong Assassin should be coming soon. And I think this might be a great spot for them with three... Uh, Three flame ours right here. That's good stuff. Come on, assassins. Where you at? They're going to wait all the way to the end. 
Or maybe there was no assassins this first wave, even. There's only eight mobs left. Ooh. Just in time there on the flyers. Alright, so that went ridiculously smoothly, so I'm just gonna throw some ups around. We got enough for. Let's hit these flame ours, too. Alright, I think we're looking good. A bunch of mana land, but I'll grab that up later. And here comes the expected dragon. We got our Frostfire stacked. And got pretty good placement on the Frost Breath that time for sure. This three Flame Ars are not doing an absolute ton, but it is just softening them up just a little bit. Actually, that one, gosh, I didn't even think about that. That one lane has got controlled burn on it, so the Flame Ars is actually not doing anything to these guys. I was like, geez, I thought that it would have softened it more than that, but I uh, derped it there. Full derp. I wanted to get that corrected here. Alright, dragon coming in. We are all lit. Get off me! Oof. Almost got me. Ooh, ballistas destroyed. I mean, they're dying once they get into the Auras. That didn't help them out too much. Alright, so I got a little, little rebuilding and changing to do here. Let's move the ballistas back just a little bit further. There's those, and then what do we want to do over here? Let's get rid of that. Actually, let's get rid of all this stuff, and let's do this instead. Get all my goods unfrozen here so I don't go and accidentally start the wave. Let's see. We know there's not going to be any flyers up in this part of the world. So why don't... I mean, are the... I'm wondering if the range mobs will aggro to that. If I just get a little poison damage ticking on them up front. And then that would allow me... To go with just like one flame aura there. I think that's pretty good. Let's get that Poison Dark Tower upgraded all the way, and hopefully that helps to soften that side up just a little bit. And here we go with wave number five. Let's check it out. Of course, wave five is the only real challenge once you get past wave five. Wave six is going to be just good game super quick. Let's just keep all this stuff. Try to stay on top of these braziers. Here comes the captain. I haven't even run over that side yet. And I do want to keep an eye out too in case of uh, any double dragon issues. It seems to be happening quite frequently uh, here lately. Anyway, the last few AP resets I've done, it seems like almost every time I get this map I get that double dragon issue. So I just gotta kind of keep an eye out for anything going frozen. Looking pretty good, actually. Alright, here it comes. And of course, we get the last assassins at the same time. They got burned down pretty quick. And I think we are good. Just a matter of surviving this last little onslaught. Very nice. We do have a sniper war bleed coming, but we got more than enough time to take that dude out. And here we go on to wave number six. Now this one, I mean, I had the mutators here, but just 
getting the job done. You know, it's with the the ascension plus even though the relics are unupgraded that I'm using and the mods I have on it aren't perfect, it's just more than sufficient to completely overpower floor 69 anyway. Now obviously floor 69 is relatively easy in terms of onslaught altogether. And there we go. So, uh, that is it for floor 69. It's on the floor 70, and I'm not going to finish an AP reset tonight, but potentially tomorrow on stream. So, that will do it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to click that like button, and please subscribe, and I will be back soon with more Dungeon Defenders 2. I'll see ya. Thank you.